Come on up, Philip. Philip Darko, he's a ministry partner, but more importantly, Philip, uh, over time, uh, as I've gotten to know him, has become a wonderful friend. So, would you welcome Philip? Good morning, everyone. And uh, pr praise the Lord. Yeah, we thank God for today. Uh, it's a blessing to be here. And uh, we want to appreciate our lead pastor, Pastor Dr. Kirk, for always giving us the opportunity to come here and share fellowship. We want to thank uh, uh, Pastor Joe, his associate pastor, and uh, the brothers and sisters at Hope. It's, it's, been, it's been a great uh, uh, fellowship all these years, and we're happy to always uh, come before you, and uh, we are humble to be here. Uh, I want to use this opportunity to thank you so much, all of you that uh, were at the banquet on October 6th to support the Ministry of Hope. It's just a blessing, uh, and we are so grateful for what the Lord is using uh, Hope Community Church to do. Indeed, uh, internally strong, externally focused, and we see that at work. Thank you so much. Uh, I think for some weeks now, uh, it's, been a, it's all about leadership. And uh, Pastor Dr. Kirk started with what actually is, is leadership. Pastor Joe also continued with uh, uh, talking about leadership in prayer. We had a, a guest speaker, Pastor Mark, if I got the name right, uh, Brother Mark, yeah. He spoke about a spiritual leader. And then uh, uh, Pastor Kirk also spoke about women in leadership. And I think last week he spoke about uh, aspiring to be a leader. And I think all these uh, speakers, I want to thank you and salute you so much for your delivery. It's been so encouraging. Uh, today we're talking about young leadership. In fact, I want to thank the choir so much for your ministration this morning. It has actually uh, brought a lot of reflection uh, to my life and <laughs> talking about Jesus Christ, our living hope. This, this is a song that any time I hear, it's, it reminds me where I am coming from. If not the hope that is in Christ Jesus, how can uh, a poor boy in a rural village who didn't know how to read and write, who was the oldest in his class, How can it happen? It's because of the living hope that is in Christ Jesus. And through that process, as a young man coming up, the Lord laid a burden, laid a burden into our hearts. So when Pastor Kirk asked me to talk about this topic, young leadership, it kind of uh, resonated or in line with the ministry of Amophobe. And just as I'm not here to talk about Amophobe, but the point is that the mission is to stretch arms of compassion to children living in poverty in the slums of Ghana, providing them with the opportunity of education, introducing them to the, to, to the love of Jesus, giving them real hope for their futures. And that hope is in Christ Jesus. Honestly, if, if today we are thinking about the living hope in Christ Jesus, it means that God himself in his own way had a plan. He says, I know the plans that I have for you. In his own divine and, and workings, the diacons connected with the Zimmermans all the way in Alaska. And, 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 and the Zimmermans after two years decided to come to Ghana. And met the Dacos about 12 years ago. But as, as, as they came in there 
and, and saw what is going on. Hope became alive. And it's amazing that our vision, <laughs> at that time, we, 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 did, we didn't know how it was going to be. But because he is our living hope, and he knows the end from the beginning, this vision came up. To see young people in slums community, disciples, young people, young people. So it's, it's appropriate that we could talk about young leadership. Not that we know so much, but it's appropriate. To see young people in slum community, disciple to love Jesus. He is our living hope. To love him. With, with all their hearts, so that they can raise up leaders as disciples who transform community, their country, and their world. And today as we speak, we see that God, in his own way, is raising up young leaders. And as we go along, as we unfold, as we talk about it, we'll see how it is. So in, in, in our ministry... The back, the back row is about emulating the model. In fact, I believe all these weeks we've had so many definitions about what leadership is. But as, as I was going through the scriptures and I was reading, there was a model that I saw about God's leadership in, in, in actually helping to shape the destiny for the hopeless. So when we go to the book of Exodus, that book is, is a book that I love so much. It shows about how God was so compassionate to his people. He demonstrates that his love, that he could hear the cry of the homeless, the cry of the fatherless, the cry of the oppressed, the cry of those who are under the bondage. And shackles. So these pictures were pictures that I saw somewhere. It's asked about who is a good leader, but that's a question that we can brainstorm as we go home. The first picture, number one, is about a, a, a hen with a, with a chicks leading leading a, a, it, and the second one is a duck with his ducklings following him. So the argument is, oh, who is actually a, a leader? But as as I pounce on this on this scripture and this model. This model is a, it's a leadership style that Arm of Hope in all these years has been using. We're modeling this. And, and, uh, uh, and what are we talking about this model? So the first one, we see God in Exodus 14, 19, that he, the Lord, let me read it. Then the angel of the Lord who had been traveling in front of Israel's army with you, and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moves, moves from in front and stood behind them. So we see God who is moving his people, but now God is leading from behind and is watching. And at the same time, we see by the day went ahead of them in the pillar of cloud, to guide them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so that he could travel by day or night. So we see that this kind of leadership God is modeling is that it, in, in, in situations you see him behind watching. And then another situation, he comes back. So I'm a folk. In, 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 his, in, his, in his work all these years, has tried to adopt this model of leadership style. That we, 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 we watch as the young ones do. And at times, we also take the lead. So this is the kind of 
model of leadership that Amophob all over the years has, has, been, has been doing. So we see the Lord leading his people. And then we see the Lord following his people. And at particular times, both picture we see over there, it is, it is God is, is showing us that God is not a one-way traffic leader. He's not a one-way traffic leader. He's balancing his approach as to leading his people, his children. But as a matter of fact, God really worked with his people because they were his firstborns. He had a covenant with them. So when I listen to what is going on in this world right now with, with Israel and all those stuff, God is with his people. He used the front and the real tactics to lead and guide his people. To guide his people. I'm a four pass model this approach all these years, and it's amazing. So, uh, when, when, when we, we, the Zimmermans will bring the team from Ghana, uh, we have families like the Francis have their children come over there, the uh, Ogilvies, uh, the Steve Wills, they have their children come. And at, at camp, those children we are talking about who are now young leaders, it reminds me of a song that they sing. Follow the teacher, follow, follow the teacher, follow the teacher. So the kids will be following these young leaders from the United States and Ghana. They are following the teachers and they are listening to them. And it's a line and they'll be going, follow the teacher, follow the teacher. They are follow. What, is, what is happening? These young ones are modeling this kind of leadership. <laughs> and, and then five years down the lane, now those who are following the leader, follow the teacher, follow the teacher, now... They are now leaders. So last year I saw David Spade, and I was thinking, oh, so this, these children who were following him, now David Spade is behind, and they are leading, and he, he's clapping, and then following them. So that's the model. In the time of Jesus Christ is life, he, he, he called people to fo come, follow me. They should come and follow him. By the time he sat down and said, go, I sent you. And it's amazing. So, in the last, next slide, we see a young man called Sami Kuchenja. And he sent me a message one day. And we want to zoom into this more. As uh, I received a, a WhatsApp message from him, and he was, uh, let's have a conversation. And he said, let's have a, a convo. And he was asking me this question. I was wondering why you decided to let me take teachings at camp. I have always wanted to ask you this. He wanted to ask me this question. Why? And I was trying to explain the model that we have been using and how we want to give an opportunity to do that. He said, yeah, I'm glad about that, but I want to know what you saw in me that made you decide I should teach with you in the first place in the first year because I was a reserved person. He was res a reserved person. That is him. That is him on the left uh, in 20, 2011, and that is him over there, and I'm the one kneeling behind watching him teach. He was following the teacher, following the teacher, but now this is a young leader now teaching at camp. But this is a relevant question that many, 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 many of our youth, we want to ask, what is in me? What have, I, what have you seen in me? How relevant I am? Am I right for the time? Am I a person who can lead? That, that's the question that many, many, many young people ask themselves. 
But tonight, or this morning, sorry, as we're talking about leadership, a biblical perspective, we are reminded of young Timothy and how his godfather, Paul, helped him to answer some of these questions that today we are talking about. So, 1 Timothy 4, 11 to 16, command and teach teachings, do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith and purity. Until I come, devote, your, devote yourself to public reading of scriptures, to preaching and to, to teaching. Do not neglect your gift which was given you through prophecy when the body of elders lay their hands on you. Be diligent in this mothers. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. So we see that this letter was written to a young, uh, young leader called Timothy. And of course, I believe in his time he might be confronting some of these questions that Sammy was asking. What is my role? How, how am I important to this, to this cause? He was asking some of these questions. And we are aware from all the previous uh, uh, talk that Paul, as he was going to minister in Lystra with, with Silas, had Timothy come over to join him. And we know from, from the past series that his mother was a Jew and the father was a Greek. And, 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 and he was well spoken about the church. And Paul saw something in him. He was, he was well spoken by the brothers. But why Timothy? So Sam is trying to ask, why me? Apparently, when we go back to Acts chapter 20, from verse 17, we can, we can have an account whereby Paul, when he was going to Jerusalem, didn't want to go through Ephesus again. So he called all the, the elders from Ephesus because that is where he's been ministering for all these years. And when we look into the account, he called them, trying to advise them to hold on to the faith, make sure that no different doctrines comes into the Ephesus church. But why Timothy? In fact, in his speech, from Acts chapter 20, from 17, coming downwards, he, Paul, I, I think he, he was a prophet. He knew what was going to happen. He, he was saying that some of the elders within the church were actually swayed from the faith and, and, and give false doctrines, will be teaching something that it is, not, it is not right. So, I don't know, but from, from that biblical explanation, I could see that it's true. What, what he actually said, I mean, happened, because most, most of them probably didn't, didn't follow it. They didn't go according to it. And that became, that became an issue. So why Timothy? Why Timothy? Because Paul walked with him for so many years, and he saw that he's somebody who can come in. So a time is going to come that we need our young men to step in. And that is what is actually happening in the ministry of uh, Amorphop in Ghana. It is very, very important. So, we are seeing a young Timothy who is being commanded to teach this things. And he said, why, 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 why? Is he, is he being tasked to do that? Now, we want to zoom into some of these things that uh, he was talking about. Command and teach these things. Don't let anyone look down upon you. 
It's amazing that. And we want to praise God that. When the church in Ephesus needed someone to stand in, to go and hold on and teach, we could lay our hands on a young leader. So, command, it means that first, God is calling Timothy to be obedient. So the command and to teach these things was that he was calling Timothy as a young leader to be obedient by the one in authority. Secondly, we saw Paul and as apostle of Jesus command God our Savior of Jesus Christ our hope. So Paul, in his, in, his, in, his, in his account, in Acts chapter 26, before Agrippa, was telling them how he met the Lord Jesus Christ on his way to Damascus when he commanded him that I'm going to use you not to persecute the church again, but I'm going to use you to, to be the light. So the same command he was giving to his son, Timothy. So first, a young leader is called to be, be obedient by one authority. Secondly, we see that a young leader is called to confront false teaching. So a young leader is called to leadership rule so that he will be alert. Can we go to the next slide? He can be alert. Many a times, we want to be nice. We want to be nice. As long, young leaders, we want to be nice. We want to be nice. So sometimes, we are not able to deduce what goes on in our environment. Paul chooses and charges Timothy to deal with the false doctrines so that no one teaches any doctrine. And he told him to devote himself to that so that the myth and the endless genealogies which promote speculations in the church can come to a halt. Thirdly, a young leader is called to overcome, to overcome being despised. So when, when I was speaking about Samuel, you could see that he, he, he thought he was not capable of doing something. That was his thinking. In the, in the same realm at that time, Timothy felt, oh, I am a young boy. What can I do for the Lord? Because when you, you, you read the account of uh, First Timothy and then Titus, it talks about who, what are the qualifications for an overseer. That was a lot of uh, conditions. A man of one, one, one wife, a uh, man of integrity, it, 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 that's a lot. Uh, he said he must be responsible, he must be hostable, he must be able to teach, he's not a drunkard. There were all these qualifications. And here, here is this young leader that is going to oversee the whole church of Ephesus. So he felt intimidated. <laughs> I don't know, the Bible didn't say whether he was married at that time, but he might feel intimidated. He might feel so young. He felt, I'm not capable. But he's saying that, do not let anyone despise your youth. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, he said, but you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit that lives in the world. And I believe as we are speaking, we want to encourage all the youth that there is something that is in you and which helps you to overcome. A leader is called to live an exemplary life. 
but set thy set aside in believers' example, in speech, in conduct, in faith, in purity. In fact, these are the virtues that a young leader, according to Paul, must show. And we can see that these three traits, especially, we have one of the traits, that is the first two, in speech and in conduct, is something that comes outwardly. In love, in faith, and purity is something within. And he's saying that, let what comes out from you, and let what is within you, should, be, should lead an example. So it's, it's very important that as you speak, what comes from your mouth as a young leader must unite and not divide, must uplift and not discourage, must bring life and not hope. It is very, very important. It's my prayer this morning that our words as young leaders will bring hope, refreshing to others. Ephesians 4, 22 to 24, that you put off concerning our former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the disease full of last of this world. My time is almost up. I want to end with this important quotation. As I was going through the messages and I was reflecting on it, there's a quote, quotation that I put on paper. And he said, after that, while generations had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up who knew nothing. Nor what the Lord of Israel has done. It behoves on us that as we are building a church, we will not leave out the young leaders because they will step in. Even when I was old and great, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come. So probably you are, you, are, you are a grandfather, grandmother now, but you have a role to play so that the next generation will hear of the acts of the Lord Almighty. Family invested into Sami Kuchenja. Now he's a leader. Last year we had about 60 leaders, young leaders, filled with the power of God. From all the above scripture, I want, I want to end by saying that when we talk about leadership, it's about intentionality, purposefulness, and finally, it is rewarding. It's humbling that people of God will appreciate the importance of young leadership. We see that Timothy was used to hold on the church. And we are seeing young men, both from America and Ghana, coming together, mentoring and discipling others. This morning, may the Lord bless us. Shall we pray? Father Lord, we want to thank you so much for such opportunity before your presence. You may this to understand the biblical perspective in young leadership. I pray that as we leave your presence, we all will come to understanding that you have a role for young leadership in developing your church and in establishing your work. Give us the grace to continue in this. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. 
Amen. Thank you, Philip. Would you stand with us? solid rock. Stand on him alone. You are dismissed.